All right, good afternoon, everybody. And um, thanks for joining us on this frosty Leicester evening uh, for the University of Leicester's Digital Open Day Information Session. My name is Dr. David Christopher, and I am a lecturer in popular screen cultures here in the Department of History of Art and Film. And I'd like to use this session to give you an overview of the film studies courses that we offer here at Leicester, talk about how they're organized, what you should expect to be studying on these courses, and the support that is available to you as a student. And afterwards, uh, we will hear from one of our top performing students uh, with her thoughts on the program from the ground floor, so to speak. Kanisha Sarkar is a second year student who's going to share some of her experience of the program so far. Uh, please feel free to capture images of the slides if you see anything interesting that you might want to come back to, perhaps in a question. Uh, also, feel free to ask questions in the chat, uh, and I will invite the program director, uh, Dr. Lin Fung, who is in attendance with us this afternoon, and our student ambassador, Kanisha, uh, to keep an eye on that and answer questions, perhaps as they see fit. So, hopefully I can change slides. Lovely. So let's um, start with the question, why should you study film at Leicester? Um, firstly, we, we have a truly diverse and internationalized curriculum. Our academics have specialist knowledge in areas including Hollywood film, Chinese cinema, British cinema, Canadian and European cinemas, as well as various other global screen cultures. And our teaching is informed by our research. So you'll be taught by experts in the area. I'll come back to that when I, we look at the program a little. Secondly, uh, we are a top ranked uh, UK university for teaching film studies. We were ranked number 10 amongst the UK University Teaching Film and Media Studies in the most recent uh, The Times University's League table, or at least the previous year perhaps. And thirdly, our courses offer an interdisciplinary approach to studying film in which you will learn about both transnational screen cultures as well as history and politics. And finally, we have excellent facilities and resources, including a fully equipped festival grade film theater and a library uh, with a wide extent catalog of resources, including uh, an enormous DVD library throughout film history and internationally. More importantly, our programs have a, a parsimonious and well curated suite of modules that provides unique learning experiences compared uh, against most other institutions offering similar theoretical film studies programs. And I'll, I'll explain this in more detail again when I review the program offerings in a moment. So let me kick off. Um, inarguably, the, the dominant storytelling mode of the last 125 years is cinema, the moving picture on numerous types of screens. And uh, humans love stories. It's an inherent part of our linguistic facility and the way that we transfer information culturally and interpersonally. And narrative is not the only mode of cinema, but it's certainly the dominant one. And this is why cinema is so culturally significant. Screens are largely in the 21st century and certainly in the latter half of the 20th, uh, where we learn our social skills, our morality, our normativity, and our ideology. So learning to quote unquote read cinema is a culturally valuable critical skill. Nevertheless, many of our students come without any film studies in their A-level background uh, and that's okay. Uh, as, a, as somebody who might be new to the field, the program is designed to accommodate uh, those levels and bring them into the fold. I believe most of the people who are here are probably interested in some aspect of film. Um, but you might be wondering, so what, what does it mean to study film rather than just enjoy it as many of us do? So on our programs, uh, we examine the historical, the cultural, the theoretical, and the artistic developments of cinema all around the world. You'll attend lectures and seminars every week. And in the lectures, we often introduce broader social or historical contexts. And in the seminars, we have smaller group discussions where we analyze films closely and in which students get an opportunity uh, to exercise their own voice in discussion uh, and critical analysis. Now, aside from our standard single subject film studies degree, we also offer joint degrees such as film and media studies 
and film and English studies. Those are the two primary joint degrees you can get uh, in the film studies department. All of our courses are structured as standard three-year programs, but our students currently also have the option to study a year abroad at a European university, or if you choose to study on our film and media degree, you will have the option to spend a semester abroad in the United States, Canada, or Australia. And with the time I have here, I'm going to go through the structure of the single honors film program. And if there's time, I'll quickly review the two joint programs as well uh, with English or media, respectively. So our single subject film studies course offers full immersion in the study of film. The first year of the course is designed to provide a solid foundation in the subject. The emphasis is on studying the classics, the canon and the important films, as well as the key theoretical film debates. Um, and what makes our program a little bit different than other programs is that typically in first year you will take uh, a year long or at least an, a, an expansive introduction to film studies module. And in that, that usually there is compressed, married together is film history, as well as the theoretical skills of, of so-called reading film. One of the strengths of our program is we uncouple those. So you will do a film history module separate from the reading film module. And what this does is afford us an opportunity to choose films in reading film that really speak to the skill of, of analysis and theory without being uh, constrained by having to sort of cover something from every decade and the classics and uh, from every continent, for example. And likewise, the film history module is not constrained by having to introduce theory that might be incongruent with a decade of cinema or international tradition. And so by uncoupling these, we're sort of free to, to look at the most important elements of that. So in semester one, you'll take core modules such as Introduction to Film History one, where you study early cinema and great classics, for example, learn about the dominant film form and standardized film style known as classical Hollywood. In semester two, we start branching out towards modernist film examples that have challenged these conventional styles, such as the European New Waves and uh, avant-garde and experimental cinemas. And you'll also have other modules that are geared towards building and solidifying analytical skills, uh, such as reading film and reading television. In year two of this program, we offer a film production module in which you learn how to make a film and you get a chance to work in teams to make your own short films. I should note here that the program is not vocational. It's a university theory program. The purpose here is not to train our students as filmmakers. Practice is only a small element of our film studies degrees, but it really helps in understanding, for example, reading film. Learning the theory of editing, for example, comes into sharp focus when you try out these techniques in the film production module. The film, stu film studies degrees at Leicester are theoretically oriented, critical studies degrees that are enhanced by opportunities for creative and professional development. This doesn't mean that our students shouldn't aspire to become filmmakers. You certainly should if you choose to, but what we offer is equipping you with critical and analytical skills and a detailed knowledge and understanding of film and not just technical filmmaking skills. In addition, in your second year, you'll have a core module titled Film Reception and Consumption, for which you will organize a student-centered film festival called First Frame, which takes place in April. Uh, you can see the image here of the, uh, the promotional um, fair that was uh, regalia that was available at the, in the lobby for the film theater. Uh, this was very well received and very popular. I'm sorry I missed it myself last year, but I will certainly be in attendance this coming year. Um, this module offers an opportunity for our students to develop a range of transferable skills in curating cinema, but also encourages them to think about their future career choices, for example, in cultural curation, festival organization, and management. In year two, you also have a module where you learn about non-Western cinemas of the world, and this slide gives an outline of researching world cinemas, a core second year module. As you can see, each week we explore different topics and a different film. And this challenging but rewarding module offers a range of film examples from diverse corners of the world. Bosnia, Japan, Iran, Argentina, Brazil, Mali, Israel, Palestine, and India. And at times, it might feel like there's a lot to take in, especially in a global module such as this one. But that's precisely what makes uh, this such a rewarding module. 
here at Leicester, we aim to open our eyes and minds to different, lesser known cinemas of the world so that we can uh, really appreciate uh, the global diversity of this important artistic form. The only core module in your final year is the dissertation where you work on a 10,000 word essay on a topic that you choose based on uh, the strengths and preferences of your studies to date. You have one to one supervision throughout the year with a member of staff who has expertise or interest in your dissertation topic. They will be carefully matched with you. And we also have a wide range of optional modules in the final year. Uh, that are designed on the specific research area of the staff in the department. Current final year options include uh, some of the modules on the slide here, uh, but of course this list is subject to change depending on faculty research uh, in any given year. And aside from our single subject film studies degree, we also offer joint degrees, as I mentioned, in media studies uh, as well as in English. Um, and I don't think I'm going to spend the time going over the details of those. I'd be happy to talk with anyone who wants to communicate with me after the fact, uh, but I'd like to get through some other um, material in my presentation before I, I turn things over to Kanisha to um, share with you her experiences from the, the student perspective. So I'm going to uh, skip through, sorry. So typically our courses are taught through lectures and seminars. You also have weekly screenings of the films uh, that we discuss. In the lectures, we often introduce broader social, cultural, or institutional context. And in the seminars, we have smaller group discussions where we analyze the films more closely and even more interpersonally. The maximum seminar group size is 15 by policy. The lectures can have larger groups. And our assessment types include essays, presentations, creative work such as film and website design, film and book reviews, and other important group projects like the production project that I mentioned in second year. Currently, uh, there are no traditional examinations scheduled in the curriculum, uh, and it looks like it's going to stay that way for the foreseeable future. We design assessments with the aim uh, to develop a range of critical, creative, and communication skills more than uh, just focusing on pedagogical skills such as test taking. And here are some of the recently published uh, books by our film studies staff, and these demonstrate that you'll be taught by research active experts in the field. We have, uh, like I said, an internationally diverse team of experts with particular research strengths in film history and theory and in a range of national and regional cinemas. Uh, you can probably hear from my odd accent that uh, I'm Canadian and I bring expertise in that field amongst many of the others that you see on the screen. Most recent data from the National Student Survey indicates that an overwhelming majority of our students have said that the staff are good with their lecture explanations and 90% have said that the staff value students views and opinions. That's built right into the curriculum with the uh, seminars that I mentioned. So we're proud of our excellence in research led teaching and student support. We're a small and friendly department. Everybody sort of knows everybody. And we work very hard to make sure that our students feel part of that community uh, when they join the film studies program. Broadly, Lester has over 200 student societies that you can get involved with, or alternatively, you can start your own student society. We have a student magazine for which you can write film reviews and a film society which holds weekly events, screenings and socials. And we also have other uh, social events designed from within the department, like the one you can see on the screen, our upcoming Is It a Christmas Film screening of Die Hard. When it comes to career options, our students have gone on to a range of different routes, including film preservation, distribution and curating, teaching and other creative aspects of the film and media industries, including television. Our most recent graduate destinations include Universal Pictures and Channel 4. We also provide a foundation for exciting careers in journalism, arts, and other cultural management positions, as well as offering a range of transferable skills that could easily uh, be put to the service of a curriculum vitae or resume aimed at any range of professional bureaucratic positions. Our career development service offers one-to-one uh, -one advice as well as help on CV writing, mock interviews, and also career coaching. And at least the production module also includes an assignment which requires students to aim a resume and cover letter at a particular job opportunity that they have selected. The service uh, from the Career Development Service will be in touch 
once a student graduates to offer help with securing employment and our graduates tend to have lifetime access to the service and its resources as alumni. On the Discover Uni website, you can find the detailed employability statistics and information on what careers our students have gone on to. For example, the most recent data shows that 95% of our film studies graduates went on to further education or were employed within 15 months of finishing their degree, and 70% of the graduates were in a highly skilled profession. The same census gathered information on what kinds of transferable skills our graduates feel they acquired and developed throughout their studies, uh, which have helped them in their working life. And here's a list of some of the more popular ones returned to us from the survey. Other graduates move on to studying at the postgraduate level. We also have an MA in film and film cultures course, and some of our alumni also have moved on to doing a PhD within the department. We currently have three of our alumni who have studied their undergraduate and postgraduate degrees with us and are now doing their PhDs in film studies uh, here at Leicester. Finally, we run a series of research seminar events where internal and external speakers come and talk about their research. And we encourage our undergraduate students to attend these talks where they can receive external views and a wider uh, viewpoint on the field of film studies or just go as an interested participant. We also maintain outstanding rankings in the national and international rating surveys. You can see these numbers across the board here. And the last thing I'd like to mention in earnest is that we have here at the University of Leicester a guaranteed low cost housing availability to all first year entrants uh, starting from 66 pounds a week with all bills include, included. And there's also a shuttle bus from these uh, residences, uh, which I know about because I actually live out in that part of the city out near Odin. So, um, I will invite everyone to, to keep in touch with, with me. Uh, I am not only a lecturer in popular screen cultures, I am also the admissions tutor for the Department of Film Studies here at the University of Leicester. I can be reached at uh, DC435 at LE, you can see there on the board. You can also email arts admissions uh, if you'd prefer to talk with uh, somebody in the um, uh, the, bureauc the bureaucracy or the uh, the office staff, the support staff, they're great. They tend to know more than I do. And uh, I'm told we have a Twitter account, which is now an X account. I know that because I just uploaded our Yippie Kaye holiday screening event to that platform. So keeping it concise, I probably could have said more about the joint degree programs, but I'll invite anybody who is in attendance who'd like to know more about those um, to feel free to contact me or contact Arts Admissions, and I can talk to you a little bit more in detail about those. Summarily, uh, you basically take 50% of your modules from film studies and 50% from either media or English, um, and uh, you, you curate that yourself based on a series of mandatory options. Uh, but then, of course, your, your final year remains focused on the dissertation in uh, a focus of your choice. So um, I'll invite questions. I'm, I'm a little lost on my screen here. I, I, all I can see is my PowerPoint. Oh, there, now I can see some people. Um, so I hope that was energetic and exciting for you. I can feel the energy, can't wait to get here. But at this point, I would like to introduce Kanisha Sarkar. She is a, like I said, she's a second year student here in the Film Studies program at the University of Leicester. Uh, very high performing and uh, generally she says interesting things to me and I thought she would be an excellent ambassador uh, to give uh, again sort of a grounds eye perspective from the student side of things on her opinion of the program. So um, Kanisha, can I, I'll stop sharing uh, now and hopefully Kanisha you can get in and maybe share your uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so yes, thank you so much, David. Uh, I'm really honored today for this opportunity and thank you so much everyone for giving me this opportunity today to come and speak about my experiences at the University of Leicester. So my name is Kanisha Sarkar and I'm a second year student studying film and media at the University of Leicester. So today I'm going to talk about uh, how uh, University of Leicester has uh, like taught me and how everything has changed my life to and uh, help me pursue film studies. 
So first of all, I'll be talking about the history of art and film program at the University of Leicester, which offers comprehensive and enriching educational experience. Also, the faculty composed of esteemed professors and lecturers is highly knowledgeable and dedicated to their respective fields, providing students with a robust academic environment. And uh, the University of Leicester offers a compelling film studies program. The University provides a strong academic foundation in film studies covering various aspects such as film theory, history, production and critical analysis. Uh, the program's curriculum is designed to equip students with a broad understanding of film and art history as well as practical skills for the workplace. Modules such as film and art, academic study and the workplace. Film production and researching world cinemas offer a blend theoretical knowledge and practical application. At the University of Leicester, our history of art and film studies program offers an immersive and dynamic journey through the captivating realms of visual culture, cinematic storytelling and artistic expressions across diverse periods and cultures. What sets our program apart is the fusion of academic excellence with an unparalleled experimental learning environment. Um, so here's what make our program truly exceptional. Uh, it has di diverse and engaging curriculum. So the curriculum is designed to spark intellectual curiosity while provoking providing a comprehensive understanding of art and film. From classical art to contemporary cinema, we cover a wide spectrum of subjects fostering a well-rounded appreciation of visual culture. Our dedicated team of fa uh, faculty members consists of accomplished scholars and industry experts. Their passion for the subject matter is infectious, creating an inspiring learning atmosphere. They not only teach but mentor, guiding students to explore their own unique perspectives. Yes, so uh, there's also innovative teaching methods that is followed at the University of Leicester, embracing modern teaching method methodologies they offer a blend of lectures, seminars, practical workshops, and field trips. This diversity ensures an interactive and stimulating learning experience that goes beyond tradition classroom settings. Also, the University of Leicester provides access to cutting edge resources, including extensive libraries, art collections, film screenings, and technological facilities. These resources enrich your academic journey and facilitate in-depth research. Also, the focus remains on holistic development for the students. They encourage critical thinking, creativity and independent exploration, preparing us to diverse career paths within the art and media industries. Choosing the University of Leicester's History of Art and Film program offers students a well-rounded, enriching and practical education, setting them for success in their future careers. The History of Art and Film program at the University of Leicester offers several unique features that make it an exceptional choice for students interested in these fields. The program provides a thorough grounding in the history of cinema and an appreciation of a wide range of different national cinemas, film culture, styles and genres. It covers a broad range of subjects from medieval art and architecture of Hollywood cinema. The program combines theoretical study with practical and vocational elements. Students get hands on experience of filmmaking and creative processes. Right now, I'm in second year and we are doing production, which is very interesting. And the academic study and the workplace of film production and researching world cinema offers a blend and theoretical knowledge and practical application. There are also study abroad opportunities. The program offers the possibility of students to study at a non-UK or European university, broadening their learning experience. Um, 
talking about the career prospects, graduates have found success in various fields, including film preservation and curating, teaching, film journalism and other cultural management positions. They have been employed by notable companies such as the British Board of Film Classification, Sky Cinema and Phoenix Cinema. The program provides all the resources needed to study and research into a visual image, including a film theater with state of the art projection. The Film Studies BA course at the University of Leicester combines practical and vocational elements with the theoretical study of film. This helped me with a comprehensive understanding of the film. One of the key practical elements of the course is the film production module, which offers students hand on experience of filmmaking and the creative process that go on behind the camera. This module serves as an introductory course in film production, providing the elements of basic literacy for those who decide to pursue careers in filmmaking. In addition to this practical and vocational elements, the course also offers a thorough grounding in the history of cinema and an understanding of a wide range of different national and transitional cinemas, film cultures, styles and genres. This blend of practical experience and theoretical knowledge makes the Film Studies BA course at the University of Leicester a comprehensive and enriching choice for students interested in film studies. So there are research opportunities as well. Students have access to research facilities, film archives and opportunities to conduct their research, contributing to the broader discourse within the film of film studies. So you can be a part of the community that celebrates artistic diversity and encourages academic excellence. Choose the University of Leicester for an unforgettable education experience in the history of art and film studies. That's my email ID and my student number. If you have any questions, you can personally ask me and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, so the first question goes, uh, are there opportunities for internships, workshops or collaborative projects with industry professionals? In, in some of the modules, so for example, in the, the, um, the curating module that's run by Dr. Fung, it's uh, you do curate a festival, and I know that there they reach out, uh, I think even internationally, to invite participants. Not to say necessarily that those are industry professionals, but certainly that is ex extensive outreach. And in the um, the module that I lead in first year on doing a video cinematic installation. We maintain uh, at least loose partnerships. Uh, we've had a partnership in the past with the Curve Theatre where the presentations were maintained uh, and we have a loose partnership with the Attenborough Arts Centre where we're hoping to uh, present some of these cinematic installations as well this year. So we do have relationships and there are opportunities for practical work, uh, but as far as an internship curated uh, from the, as far as an internship that is curated from within the program, no, that's not part of the program at this point, uh, but that may become uh, part of the program as we continue our curriculum development in the coming years. Lynn, did you want to speak to that at all? Oh, hello. Hi, I hope you all can hear me. Uh, yeah, I think David more or less mentioned everything, um, but yes, for the second year modules, it is a real film festival. It's not mock ones or rational ones. So students does have that experience. And also I do encourage my students to go out, reach out uh, with uh, whether filmmakers or curators or other uh, industrial people to make the festival more exciting. So that is a real event uh, which you have a hands-on experience. Uh, basically, you kind of work in already <laughs> sort of kind of in the industry, um, even though it's not directly tagged with um, any specific, um, how should I say, business or, or, or that kind of internship, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks. So your answers, um, Mr. David and then. Uh, and the second question goes, uh, how are students assessed through exams, projects or a combination of both? 
Uh, not a combination of both. Um, as I mentioned uh, briefly and quickly during my presentation, examinations, traditional examinations, are not currently part of our curriculum. So there's, but there is a, a diversity of uh, assessment types. So, so for example, in film production, you are assessed as a group for um, the theory that is presented in the film and promotional material you present, but then individually you are assessed uh, in your own reflection, professional reflection of that experience. In uh, reading film, for example, you do a portfolio of what I learned, a tripartite what I learned journal entry, and at the end you do a theoretically informed sequence analysis. In uh, second year, you do an independent research project, which results in uh, a traditional longer word count essay. Um, and there are uh, also group presentations. Um, so for example, in the Star Wars module that I'm convening right now, uh, the, the students are assigned a final essay based on a topic of their choosing, um, as well as a group presentation uh, assigned from the topics throughout the module. So there's a range of different types of assessments uh, designed to accommodate a wide uh, variety of learning styles and to um, uh, develop a wide swath of transferable skills in terms of professional development. Uh, but the traditional examination and all of the um, anxiety that goes along with that uh, has largely been excised from the curriculum. And um, as far as I know, as I mentioned, I don't believe there's any plans to uh, return to the use of examinations in, in the, the foreseeable future. So. Okay, thanks for the answer, Mr. David. And uh, the next question goes, um, can students showcase their work at film festivals or other public platforms throughout their course? That's a question that I'm actually again I'm going to let um, Professor let Dr. Fong respond to, but but uh, the short answer is there is some facility for it, uh, but exactly what that is I know that internally when we do the film production module, for example, we have our own small festival within the module and there are invitees from film production. I have a Canadian filmmaker who joins us and I have a um, a photographer who joins us, for example, um, but uh, they, there is in terms of showing those publicly, there's all sorts of screening rights, especially if the students, for example, have used music that they have taken uh, offline for the production of their film. It becomes uh, an issue of getting uh, public rights because they can use it under fair use within the module, but when it becomes publicly screened, now we have, we do have an institute, an agency at the, at the university um, to assist us with that sort of thing. But Lynn, again, sorry to, to uh, jump to you. Would you mind fielding that question? Uh, no, not at all. Um, well, that's a really good question because we would like to showcase our students' work because, as I said, all tutor, teachers, lecturers are proud of our students' achievement. Uh, but for the film festival, that's one thing we need to be very careful because, as I said, it's a real film festival. We do need to make sure, you know, for the for the curators, um, who may even shortlist in the films to uh, judge the films, we need to make sure it's a fair assessment, right? So students who are participate on those uh, film festival, they were not actually allowed to submit their own work because that's a conflict of interest. So it is a kind of, for the film festival wise, it is in the more uh, strict setting. However, having said that, that's only for when you are in the second year, single honor group students who are actually organizing the film festival. Once you move into the third year, or in the first year, if you have anything, there's nothing at least for now to stop you submitting, um, unless this year's or, or the year, the cohort of students suddenly decide to say, no, we're not gonna take less to students <laughs> submission. At the moment, I haven't heard anything proposed by our students. <laughs> so yes, there's a chance you can um, presenting or things and also even for the dissertation in the for the final year dissertation we encourage students to create the um, research poster which is also will be presented uh, uh, to to your peer students and the two faculties so again that's another thing so you can expect it uh, from that channel 
thank you so much for your answers. Uh, and there's just uh, one more question uh, before we wrap up the meeting. Uh, it is uh, what types of careers do graduates typically pursue after completing the course? Um, well, that's a question that would take a, a lot more than five minutes to answer. In the slide, so what I would what I would uh, guide people to do is to have a look at um, the slide presentation that will be included in the recording for this event, or to email me, um, and I can review it with them. Um, because there is a wide range of, of possible careers in terms of transferable skills. And um, li like suggested in the slide, uh, we had uh, Channel 4. There was uptake uh, from Channel 4 recently for one of our graduate students, um, as well as one of the production companies in Hollywood. Uh, I'm just, sorry, I'm just having a look myself. So the list includes things like film programming and curating, film preservation and archive work, teaching, television and other creative aspects of the film and media industries, journalism, uh, arts, cultural and heritage management administration, and of course, uh, the, the opportunities for film production or even writing. Uh, these are also amongst the types of skills, employable skills that uh, students can expect to attain throughout the program. And in terms of um, transferable skills, which again might be applied against any range of professional positions that uh, a student might apply for, um, you know, analysis, critical analysis, collection management, um, research and opinion uh, forming, uh, governments, governance and leadership, communication, public speaking, networking, and just writing are uh, amongst a few of the um, really, really saleable transferable skills uh, that a student will definitely be strong in once they succeed in the program. So I know that wasn't a specific answer. I'd have to go and look at all the statistics of who got hired last year, uh, but that's generally uh, the information that has come back to us in the last couple of years on the success of our graduates. All right. Thank you for your answers, David. Uh, Lynn, and thank you for your presentation, Kanisha, Lynn, and David. Uh, and we are going to end this session now. Uh, it, it, it was a really good talk uh, having you all for film studies. Thank you, Kanisha, in particular. What a, a great effort from a student for um, taking the time to share your perspectives with us. I think that was particularly valuable. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you everyone.